One of the newest features announced at Google I.O. this year was something called Magic Compose. If you're not sure what that is, no big deal. It's basically Google's AI technology shoved into the Google messaging app. Over the course of the weekend, I got my hands on it and I've realized a couple things. One, I'm a terrible texter. And two, this feature is pretty awesome for terrible texters such as myself. So I just want to give you a quick mini overview on how it works, what Magic Compose is like, and what you can expect if you do end up getting access in the future. First things first, to gain access to Magic Compose at this time, you're going to need to be enrolled in the Google Messages Open Beta, located in the US, with a US SIM card and a US phone number. <laughs> Something else that's kind of frustrating depending on how you look at it is priority access for Google One Premium members, specifically those who have the two terabyte plan. But either way, if you want to try out Magic Compose for yourself, that's how you can go about doing it. I also put Google's official Help Center document in the description if you want to read through it yourself. Once you go through the steps, you'll know you have access to Magic Compose when you see the little messaging icon with the star appear in your RCS texting threads. And from there, using it's actually really simple. Magic Compose works in two stages. The first stage is hitting that little message icon, and then Google reads your previous 20 texts and then is able to spit out some responses. These responses are much more detailed than the smart reply suggestions, and you should find that they're actually relevant to the conversation. The second stage of Magic Compose is the ability to change the tone of a message you've already typed out. To access this, you just have to type a message, hit that little pen icon, and from there, you can select from different tones or attitudes for something that you feel best suits the situation. As you can see here, there's about five different tones to choose from, but I only find the chill, excited, and formal themes actually useful. Everything else is just more for fun, like the Shakespeare or lyrical options. Typically, from my experience, most of the options using Magic Compose normally err on the side of helpful optimism, no matter the topic. I tested this out with a few different conversations. So for example, a family member told me their pet wasn't feeling good and needed to be taken to the vet. When I requested a response through Magic Compose, I got a few suggestions showing sympathy or offering to help, or even a generic hope everything gets better message. From there, I can send exactly what Magic Compose put together or personalize it a bit to tailor the response response to the situation at hand. And I do have to say, this AI is pretty good at moving the conversations along. Another time, my friend sent me a message saying that he couldn't hang that night because he had to take care of his pet too. And again, the AI was helpful, gave me some options for comfort or for empathy. And the option that I went with was, not a problem, hope your dog feels better soon, what time works best for you because they wanted to hang out the next day. And that just made me feel good because I was able to quickly respond with relevant information without having to overthink the nature of the message. And with all things tech, I just wanted to share my likes and my dislikes. And as for the things I'm enjoying about Magic Compose, I just have to say, I'm a terrible texter. If I get a text message and I'm not sure how to respond, I'll just put it down for an hour. And then one hour turns to two hours, two hours turns into two weeks. And then I'm like a jerk for not answering people. So Magic Compose really does help me get the messages out there and get connected to people as quickly as possible. I also love that you can just inquire about the current message you're about to send to see if there's a better way to rephrase that message, either for clarity or to make sure that you're getting the point across. I think the different tones option has potential as well. The silly ones, not so much, but if we could get more realistic options, like maybe a professional speaking to your boss type tone or a negotiation type tone or something like that. This is all new technology, so it's a little hard to pinpoint super useful suggestions, but I have a feeling that Google has a pulse on what people People find useful and we just need to see them flesh it out. As for the dislikes, there's not many, but I have to say it's kind of weird how often this AI bot wants to throw emojis out there. That's probably a personal preference thing, but out of the eight or so responses that it gives you, six of them have emojis in it. No big deal because you can just erase them, but I just felt like it was something to note. Another concern is of course privacy. The only information that we have is on the Magic Compose beta page where Google makes it clear that they do not store messages or use them to train machine learning models. They say up to 20 previous messages, including emojis, reactions, and URLs are sent to Google, but not attachments, voice messages, or photos. And from the language here, once you get the responses, the messages get discarded from the server. Of course, if you use Google services now, they probably have access to that information anyways, but it was still a valid concern that I wanted to bring up. Something else that bothers me is the fact that you can only use this among other RCS users. Here in the United States, about 90% of the people out here have iPhones, so finding people to test 
this feature out with was pretty frustrating. <laughs> Lastly, you can only use the Magic Compose feature inside the actual Google Messages application. So unfortunately, you cannot swipe down on a notification to use Magic Compose. It can only be accessed through Google Messages. Ultimately, I think Magic Compose is an awesome feature that of course needs a little work, but is still a strong showing for how AI systems can help make things slightly easier. The way I see it, if you use Magic Compose to just aid your messages as opposed to using them to outright replace the need to text, I think you're gonna get a lot of use out of it. Talking about me personally, this is definitely a feature that I need and moving forward, I plan to stay in the open beta for this as long as they will allow me to. So if you guys have any questions or just anything you want me to take a look at over the next couple of weeks or months while I'm using this day to day, let me know. I'd be happy to leave some comments or, you know, at least myself or the community can get to them. So leave a comment. Let me know what you think about Magic Compose. And other than that, guys, this is Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.